Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical expression with complex numbers. So we have the square root of 1 plus i times the square root of 1 plus i times the square root of 1 plus, you get the idea? And we're going to try to evaluate this expression. One of the questions we need to ask or raise is does this expression converge? In other words, is there a finite answer for something like this? And that's a really good question, right? So something to think about. And are there ways to do it? Good questions. So to be able to evaluate an expression like this, we're going to take advantage of the fact that this expression contains itself. What is that supposed to mean? This is what I'm talking about. When we set the whole thing equal to z, then we realize that we have the z inside z. Notice the outside. Square root of 1 plus i times the square root of 1. So if you start here and take a look at this piece, which obviously contains infinite many terms, you're going to realize that it's the same thing as the original. You know what I'm talking about? Look at that. Square root of 1 plus i times the square root of 1 plus i times the square root. You see? Same thing over and over. Oh, obviously, this expression contains itself infinitely many times, but you can just use one of those. You don't have to go infinitely many times or even more than once. So what does this turn into? This turns into the square root of 1 plus i z is equal to z. So we kind of need to find a complex number that satisfies this equation. Wait a minute. What is a complex number? A complex number is made up of two parts, real and imaginary. So we can write a complex number z as a plus b i, where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1. i squared equals negative 1 follows from here, but when I say the square root, I'm talking about the principal square root because a complex number has two square roots. Exception, 0. Obviously, 0 has only one square root, which is 0 itself right? So, but we do have to distinguish between any square root or the principal square root because we want this concept to agree with real numbers. Because when you take the square root of a real number 4, it has a unique answer because it's an operation. And when you do something like square rooting operation, right, then you are supposed to get a unique answer because that's how operations are well defined. Same thing goes for functions, but that's a different story. So, we go by the principal square root of a number, okay? So, how do we proceed? We can go ahead and solve this equation, but let's talk briefly about these kinds of expressions. For example, if you had square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and this repeats forever, this expression actually converges, because you can write a sequence with terms like, square root of 2, and then the square root of 2 times a n, so on and so forth, right? Start with the first term and then just keep defining it recursively. And when you take the limit, as n approaches infinity, it converges, so on and so forth. You can also show that it's like increasing and has an upper bound, or and so on and so forth. There's a couple different ways to do that. But this is fairly easy and this actually converges to 2. Well, what happens if it's this one? Well, it's kind of interesting, but this also converges to 2. That's a very special scenario. But what about complex numbers? Can we safely say that this converges, right? I mean, we can kind of set it equal to w and just say that, okay, this is w. Square root of i w equals w. I can square both sides. w squared i w. And then put everything on the same side. Don't simplify. Don't cancel out anything. So we're going to get two solutions from here w is 0, which doesn't make sense at all because we know this is not 0, and w equals i. So just like the 2 in the example, i gives us the same thing because why not, right? It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But how do you prove that it's convergent? That's a different story. And with the sum, uh, can we find something nice? No, not really because we kind of need to Look at the square root of some number like, I think it was 1 plus 4i or something. Anyways, let's get back to this equation. Just wanted to give you a quick rundown. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made videos on basics of complex numbers. 
I think nine of them. And ask questions. That's the best way to learn uh, about anything. And if you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry, and maybe a little bit of geometry, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math with an Cyber with an S. Okay? Cool, cool. Now let's get back to the problem after this little commercial break. This is what we have. That gave us this. Let's take it from there. Square root of 1 plus iz is equal to z. I mean, I could put z on the left-hand side, but no big deal. This is what happened. Now, let me tell you, what would happen if you didn't stop at that point and you continued and, you know, just look at it a little different. Okay, if this whole thing is z, then can't I also say that this is the same as z? Absolutely. So you could write your equation like this as well. Square root of 1 plus i times the square root of 1 plus iz is equal to z. Let me tell you something. This will bring a lot of complications. But let me show you something that's, that's really interesting. If you look at this, we know that the square root of 1 plus iz is z, so this is the same as z. Guess what? That brings you back to square one. So this implies itself, sort of like a circular uh, implication. I don't know what it's called. Something like that, logically. So let's get back to this and we'll take it from here. So we're going to keep it simple and try to solve this equation. But can I take z on the left-hand side? Thank you. So now we're going to go ahead and square both sides because we have a radical. And when we do, we're going to get z squared equals 1 plus iz. Now we can put everything on the same side because this will give us a quadratic equation. And if you don't believe that, I'll show you. Uh, this is quadratic because this is z squared and this is z. So as you can see, it's like az squared plus bz plus c equals 0. That's a quadratic in z. In this case, a is 1. B is negative i and C is negative 1. And it's okay to have complex or imaginary coefficients. Okay? How do you solve it, though? With the quadratic formula, what else can you use, right? I mean, unless you want to complete the square, negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, which is I squared, minus 4AC, which is plus 4. Uh-oh. I squared is negative 1. Remember, one thing that you should never, ever forget. I squared equals negative 1. Always remember this, okay? Do me a favor. So now i squared will be negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is positive 3. So z will be i plus minus square root of 3 divided by 2. This is kind of different from square root of 3 plus minus i divided by 2. But you can't, if you want, you can write it as plus minus root 3 plus i divided by 2, which is kind of like a weird version. But I think it's better. You know why? Because you want to write the... What's it called? Imaginary, I mean the real part first, right? Obviously. And the plus minus sign, and I know I write it differently, backwards, upside down, whatever. Whatever you're going to call it. This is my way or highway. So, this is what we have. This is what we have, and that should be the solution. But guess what? Can we have two different solutions for this? Because this is not like solving an equation. Well, it turns out to be, but we have a single expression. So... Here is another million dollar question for you to explore. Can this be two different things at the same time, right? And if I had to choose, which one would I choose? Obviously, I would go with the positive solution and say that, okay, I think this converges to root 3 plus i divided by 2. And guess what? We could write this in polar form as well. If you're interested, it's going to look like root 3 over 2 plus one half of i, and notice that this is the same as cosine pi over six, and this is the sine pi over six, and we multiply by i, so this can be written as e to the power i times pi over six as well. That seems to be the solution, but what do you think? Let me know what your thoughts are about this infinite radical expression. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.